This is your WMDX Daily News Roundup for Mad Radio 92.7 FM and 1580 AM in Madison. Civic Media News. I'm Terry Bell. Here's what Wisconsin needs to know. Disabled voters in Wisconsin who want to will be able to get absentee ballots by email for now. A Madison judge declined a request to block his own order yesterday. Judge Everett Mitchell says it's a case of disability rights. The ruling is headed to an appeals court. Cities, villages, and counties all over Wisconsin are getting their first $1.5 billion from the state's new shared revenue system. Lawmakers and the governor agreed on a shared revenue deal last year. It also let Milwaukee and Milwaukee County raise sales taxes. More than 20 Wisconsin communities will split more than $20 million for public improvement projects. The grant money from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development is going to low- to moderate-income communities with fewer than 50,000 people. Projects include improvements and repairs to streets, water, sewer, and drainage systems. Voters in western Wisconsin's 3rd District could decide which party controls the U.S. House. That's why Congressman Mark Pocan has been spending so much time there. That seat is probably one of the top 10 to 20 seats in the country for Democrats to get the majority. So I think you saw House Majority Pack just did a $4 million buy uh, in the third CD. Uh, they're very committed to this district. Bocan is campaigning with Democrat Katrina Shankland, who's running for Congress against Rebecca Cook and Eric Wilson in the primary. The average American family will spend $875 on school supplies this year. More families these days are asking for help with that. Clarissa Zemke is with a nonprofit called Family Pathways. She says tech accessories are in high demand. Headphones are a big thing on pretty much every list from elementary on up. A lot of things that we're seeing right now, especially for the older kids, is USB flash drives. Pencils and notebooks are always good donations. So are gym shoes and other clothes since kids outgrow them quickly. The Yellow Brick Road leads back to Oconomowoc once again. The city's Wizard of Oz celebration is in two weeks. A special screening on August 15th will commemorate the 85th anniversary of the beloved movie's world debut there. I'm Terry Bell, Civic Media News. Here's what you need to know closer to home. This is news from WMDX Madison. I'm Savannah Tomei Olson. Today, there's new artwork on all of the city's ballot drop boxes. The boxes were sealed but stayed put when the state Supreme Court ruled in 2022 that they were illegal. The court was controlled by conservatives then. The city had messages put on the boxes that said things like, the truth is powerful and will prevail. But now that the liberal majority court has reinstated them, Madison is giving them a new look. It actually looks a lot like the old look. They're blue, they have the Madison flag on them, but this time they have QR codes that lead people to my vote wisconsin there are 14 drop boxes across the city 13 outside fire stations and one at elver park meanwhile in person early voting is available this weekend in the city of madison there are 11 locations where you can vote on saturday many of them city libraries and if you want to vote sunday there are four spots for you we've got a story online so you can find the most convenient place for you and the hours they're open just head to mad.radio Veterans can suffer from PTSD for a variety of reasons, not just because they were in combat, according to Brown County Director of Veterans Services, Joe Olick. You could see a car accident. Uh, I witnessed one when I was in the Air Force, uh, head-on collision. First one on the scene. That's traumatic. Different things like that. Uh, two uh, destroyers ran into each other, cut the boat in half. Another veteran watched uh, 20 of his friends go into the ocean and never come back. For information about veteran services in Dane County, including counseling, call 608-266-4158. That's exactly what the Veteran Service Office is there for. And officials will be out patrolling this weekend for people on ATVs and UTVs. The Department of Natural Resources will have wardens out starting today for their Think Smart Before You Start campaign. They'll be looking for intoxicated drivers and to ensure people wear seatbelts in the vehicles that have them. Last year, during this campaign, they made contact with 500 drivers. More than a third of ATV, UTV crashes in Wisconsin involve alcohol. And we've got a hot weekend ahead, but right now, all beaches in Dane County are open except for Tenney Beach, but only because it's under construction. We've had so much rain lately that algae and bacteria have had perfect conditions to grow. This is one of the first weekends in months that all beaches are safe and open. It's the best weekend of the year if you love mustard. Every year on the first Saturday in August, National Mustard Day comes to Middleton. There's live music, kids' activities, tons of games, but of course food is the star of the show. You can get a brat, grilled cheese, or big pretzel with tons of condiment options. However, ketchup may earn you a side eye. Middleton is home to the National Mustard Museum, and the museum has hosted National Mustard Day since 1991.
National Mustard Day is free in downtown Middleton tomorrow. And if you have an avid collector in your family, listen up, especially if they're fans of the History Channel. The crew from American Pickers is headed to Wisconsin. However, they haven't planned their trip yet. They need to decide where to go. They're looking for people with extraordinary collections of antiques, which, if you've seen the show, sometimes looks like garages full of stuff or junkyards. If that sounds like someone in your life, they want to hear from you. And that's what you need to know. I'm Savannah Tomei Olson, WMDX News. The Brewers start a new pitcher. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with Sports. The Brewers opening a weekend series in Washington against the Nationals. Frankie Montas will get his first start tonight in a Brewers uniform. He's still surprised after 19 starts this season, the Reds traded him. So how does he feel about this game tonight? I don't know, man. I just just want to go out there, you know, pitch, grind. Always good to come to a team that's in first place. These guys believe in me, so I believe in myself as well. NFL Hall of Fame game called off in Canton, Ohio last night due to heavy rains and lightning. With a little over three minutes left to play in the third quarter, the Bears were leading the Texans 21-17. to Caleb Williams did not suit up. The Packers family night is tomorrow night, and one of the things that the team wants to work on is that new formation on kickoffs. Special teams coordinator Rich Bisaccia had the NFL referees at practice this week. They were in all of our meetings, back block, double team blocks, all those sort of things, really just to the initial alignment of both the kickoff and the kickoff returns. That's the Packers coach Rich Passaccia with Sports. I'm Mike Clemens. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. Summer blockbuster season might be winding down, but that doesn't mean there aren't new films opening every week. This week's headliner is the new M. Night Shyamalan film, Trap. The film stars Josh Hartnett. The story is centered around a father and daughter who attend a concert and find themselves present at something much more sinister. People don't use the word sinister nearly enough, in my opinion. There are only a handful of reviews available, and they are mostly favorable. The summer of horror continues. This has also been the summer of kids and family films, which have helped the early summer box office. Do you wish you could draw something and have it come to life? You can go to the theater this weekend and see the next best thing as Harold and the Purple Crayon hits theaters. The comedy starring Zachary Levi and Zoe Deschanel is not reviewing particularly well, pulling just a 36% on Rotten Tomatoes. But that has not stopped audiences from seeing family films this summer. Let's go to the movies. Fans of the show Squid Game are in for a real treat as a release date for season two has been announced. IndieWire reports that Netflix has also announced on Wednesday that a third season will happen in 2025. Season 2 will premiere on Netflix December 26th of this year. Not many people have sympathy for high-paid movie stars, but Roadhouse director Doug Lyman says despite the fact that 50 million people streamed Roadhouse on Amazon Prime, he did not receive one cent. Variety reports that Lyman said the MGM film was originally slated to open in theaters, but was switched to streaming at the last minute. And despite the robust streaming numbers, no one was compensated, including star Jake Gyllenhaal and producer Joel Silver. There is a second Roadhouse in development. No word yet on whether or not Conor McGregor will wear pants in the sequel. It was not all innocent fun at Comic-Con last week in San Diego, California. The comic book fan convention grows in popularity every year. This year, however, law enforcement executed a sting operation and arrested 14 people on charges of sex trafficking and rescued 10 potential victims, one of which was 16. A representative for the comic book culture convention told Entertainment Weekly that the arrests were made outside of the event. Poker players and moviegoers alike will be interested in this. Matt Damon dropped hints on The Rich Eisen Show about a possible sequel to his 1998 film Rounders. The film was not a box office darling, but has gained fans over the years, most likely through the growing popularity of Texas Hold'em. Damon plays a graduate student who promises his girlfriend he will quit gambling, but gets sucked into helping his friend, played by Edward Norton, pay off a debt to a Russian gangster, played by John Malkovich. Let's see if the studio goes all in or folds. For more showbiz fun, tune in to Nightlight with me, Pete Schwaba. Weeknights from 7 to 9 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. Partly cloudy today, and it will be a little muggy. Our high right around 86 this afternoon. The wind out of the north at 5 to 15. Tonight, clear 67. Tomorrow, sunshine 88. On Sunday, partly cloudy with a high near 86. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable. Right now, it's 70. That's your WMDX Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at mad.radio.